Thank you for spending time with me today, and welcome to the Just Sell Baby Show. My name is Eric Louvier, the Million Dollar Marketer, and each show, we focus on how to produce explosive revenue, how to unlock our inner game, how to be relentless, baby, and we discuss business insights and breakthroughs that are simply life-changing. So buckle up, take a deep breath, and hold on tight, and let the show begin. guys, this is Eric Louvier. Welcome. Look, today's show is going to be about getting rich, making millions, making a lot of money, living that huge, abundant freedom lifestyle. We're going to talk about being an entrepreneur. I mean, this, this show today is about success. It's about not being average, not being ordinary, not being an average human being on planet Earth, being extraordinary. So this show is going to be hard-hitting. You know, sort of like a, sort of like a two by four upside the head, hard hitting. So I'd like to just give you a warning right up front to brace for a little bit of impact because uh, we're going to get all up into this. But that's how we roll around here. You know, wimpy little attitudes, they don't tend to do too well around here. So let's, let's dive in because I have a lot to share and I have a lot to talk about and I want to just let it fly, just let it be raw, just let it rip. You don't want to miss this episode. Believe it. Believe it. So, all right. Let's, let's just get into this. Okay. To kick this off, I want to like, I want to go ahead and first talk about, let's start from the like bare basics, like the, the, the core essence of becoming successful as an entrepreneur. And th- I mean, there's a big, huge difference between being a business owner and being an employee. Let's just start there. Because, you know, after 10, 12 years now of coaching people, there's a lot of people that have come across my desk who are employees, and they want desperately to become business owners. They want desperately to be able to live that internet lifestyle where they can, you know, sleep all day and work at night or work when they want to and be on the beach or the laptop, and they've been bombarded with that image. That's the image they've instilled into their mind, and that's what they want to live. They want to live that freedom. They don't want to work for the man anymore. So we're going to talk about that, but I want you to understand right from the beginning that there's a huge stark difference between being a business owner and being an employee, okay, huge difference, like, I mean, light years apart difference, right, like the employee sees very few opportunities and is not in the opportunity game at all, when I was an employee, I never saw any business opportunities, they never came around, I couldn't see anything, all I saw was my job, you know, I had to make a concerted effort to get outside my world And start finding those business opportunities, start finding those deals, start finding those chances. But as an employee, I never saw them. I was just like locked up into my cubicle and just did my job and drove home in Houston traffic and took an hour and a half to get home, an hour and a half to get to work and fought office politics and drama and crap and, you know, bureaucracy and couldn't move the business an inch. It was ridiculous. But in that, I never saw any opportunities where when I own my own business, I see opportunities almost every single day. So it's a completely different world. It's like the employee is from Mars, the planet Mars, and the business owner is from planet Jupiter. And that's a long ways away, okay? You can't just hop in your car and drive from Mars to Jupiter. It's a pretty far distance, right? You need a super rocket ship. That, that's, that's the difference. There's different atmospheres on Jupiter, different sizes, different atmosphere on Mars. I mean, different, you need different equipment. There's crazy storms on Jupiter and you know, that'll wipe you out and disintegrate you and all kinds of crazy crap. It's completely different worlds. They're worlds apart. Different atmospheres, different worlds. That's how it is, the difference between an employee and a business owner. And a lot of employees want to become successful and rich as entrepreneurs, but they got to get over the fact that they're freaking employees. It's completely different. The employee gets a paycheck every two weeks direct deposited right into their bank account. Taxes taken out and everything. Conveniently for them, the taxes are taken out. Because if they had to physically mail in the taxes, we would have a different tax situation in our country. So it's completely different. The taxes are taken out. Like clockwork, robotic, 
pop, pop, drip, drip, drip. The insurance is covered by the employer. The 401k is taken out. You got some profit sharing once in a while, maybe. Some friends' benefits maybe added in there. And it's like two week, it's like a two week drip, like a two week hit of hope, right? Just like a two week hit of dope. Just drip, 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 right? Dripping out relief every two weeks, like clockwork. Tick tock, tick tock, direct deposited. Tick tock, tick tock, two weeks past, direct deposited. Tick tock, two weeks past, direct deposited. And you keep going like that, right? And you take your vacation, maybe you get a 1% raise every year or so, whatever, okay? Does the business owner have this same type of security? Does the business owner have this same drip, drip of a paycheck? Nah, nah, it, he doesn't, she doesn't. The business owner has to scrape off the, off the bottom, usually, after paying everybody else. So, so the business owner makes a bunch of money that month, but they gotta pay the employees, they gotta meet payroll, they gotta pay the office rent, the vendors, the suppliers, they gotta pay taxes, they gotta pay the five maxed out credit cards that they maxed out last month when they were trying to hit, you know, payroll and whatnot. You know, it took last month to get, get to this month and no, nah, they, they don't get the drip, drip paycheck. The business owners usually have to scrape off the bottom and pay everybody else first. The employee, it's a different world. They can call in sick because they drank too much last night and they don't feel good. So they call in sick. I don't feel good. So I'm going to call sick. The business owner, nah, nah. He's got to make payroll. They, they got to they gotta pull their ass up and get it to the office and make sure they get through it with cold and boogers going everywhere and everything, right? Snot all over the keyboard. They got to do what they got to do to make it work. Because if not, the kids starve. They got to put food on the table. It's not an employee. It's not a drip, drip paycheck. It's completely different. You got to be a mover, a shaker. The pressure's on you. No one's going to run your business like you. You're in control. You're the owner. You're the person. You're the salesperson, the janitor, the secretary, and everything. You're the business owner. The employee, you know, completely different. I mean, like, let's just look at the lifestyle of, of an employee. So what happens? Well, employee gets home from work. You know, and, and then what? The brain turns off. The brain turns off work. There's no more thinking about work anymore, usually. Maybe once in a while there's some extra stress at work, like there's a possibility of being laid off or you got in trouble or written up for something. But usually, 90% of the time, 99% of the time, the employee just, as soon as they get home, their brain just shuts off work. It's like, work? What's work? It's, you know, if you think about it till tomorrow. And if one of your friends says, how's work? You don't even want to talk about it. You want to talk about sports or something else. You want to sit down on your recliner and have grab a drink and watch TV. Chill, relax, vegetate. You know, so the employee doesn't, they don't worry. They don't worry much about work, ever. Weekends, barbecue and watch sports and TV reality shows. You know, go to the festival, the carnival, you know, do some stuff, go to the, go to the baseball game, whatever. The, the business owner, nah, it's not like that. The business owner is thinking business almost all the time, constantly. This is the difference. If you want to be successful, you want to be rich. This is what we're talking about. If you want to be rich as a business owner, then you can listen up. Take notes. You can listen to this again and again because this is the difference. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover a couple things that as a business owner, you got to know about these things if you want to thrive, if you want to succeed. But the business owner, I mean, they they're always constantly thinking about business. They, they wake up in the middle of the night, you know, to go to the restroom or something, and they're just kind of like half asleep, stumbling back to bed. And in that brief moment, that brief little walk to the restroom and back to their bed, a thought about business popped into their head while they're using the restroom. You know, some of us guys in our 40s, we might get up a couple of times a night, right? And, what, and, and then that little brief slumber, or in half dream world and half, you know, awake, what thoughts pop in our head usually? Business. You know, business. Challenges. We're figuring out things. We're trying to solve problems. We're trying to make things work. We're trying to get to that next level. We're trying to figure out some issue that just crept up, some crisis that just happened in business earlier in that day, something we got to deal with this week or this month or today, tomorrow. So we're, so we're walking to the restroom and very quickly Presto, we got a new thought to deal with, right? Maybe we've got an idea in the middle of the night. And watch out, because if, if you get a thought about business that kind of catches you while you're going to the restroom, 
your your night's sleep might be over because your mind is racing now and your mind is solving problems and working things out. And you may need to go grab the laptop or journal and sit down and write and let your mind dump out all that information. If you're a business owner, you know what I'm talking about. If you're a business owner, you're like, oh, man, this is, this is, this is just nailing me, right? Exactly. If you're an employee, you may be thinking like, man, I don't even want to listen to this. Like, this sounds like hell. This sounds ridiculous. Get me back to my drip drip. <laughs> Give me back to my drip drip paycheck, man. Give me my direct deposited two week vacation a year deal. I don't want any of this. It's too hard. Business owners are like, keep preaching. Keep preaching. This podcast cannot end. Keep going, right? The business owners are different. They're thinking about business constantly. They wake up in the middle of the night. When they're at the movies, they're thinking about business. You know, when they're at the restaurant on date night, a thought will pop in their head when their wife or husband goes to the restroom, that you know, or the waiter is ordering, or they're thinking about business. The business pops in their minds all the time. Is they're constantly trying to break that code, solve that problem, figure out that puzzle. They're they're moving, they're shaking, they're making things happen. They have challenges they have to deal with, and they have this fire that's burning inside them, inside their gut. This 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 fire that won't ever go away, and it can never be satisfied. And that fire is ambition. Cursed is the person and blessed is the person with good with, 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 with ambition. Because you have to wake up in the middle of the night. And you, and you have to be more than you are now. And you have to succeed. And you have to push yourself. And you have to grow internally. And you've got to help your brothers and sisters on planet Earth. And you've got to make a difference. And you've got to change the world while you're here on planet Earth. Because life is short. And you're running out of time. And that, yet that fire keeps burning inside you, pushing you forward, never letting you go. You can't stop thinking about it. It's just bugging the hell out of you. You just go, go, go. And the fire won't let you go inside. Do you know what I'm talking about? If you do, then success is waiting for you. You're one of, you're one of us. You're like me. I'm like you. We're the same. Am I talking your language? Do you have that fire burning inside of you that won't ever go out? Or do you have the remote control and you're sitting on a recliner watching the latest reality TV show with your mind turned off to success? You're on the drip drip. Life. Drip, drip, drip. Tick, tock, tick, tock, drip. Is that what you're doing? Because business owners are not. And there's a stark difference between the two. If you're on the couch with the remote control, watching reality TV shows, with your mind turned off the business, and all you gotta do is go to the job and do just enough so you don't get fired. You know, just enough to keep the drip, drip of a paycheck, direct deposited, going on, and keep it without getting fired. If that's the lifestyle you're living, then you're spending all of your time Entertainment-wise, even while you're at work, you're not really working, right? You only work about 50% of the time. If that, the rest of the time you're goofing off, you're on the internet, you're jacking around. You're not working, right? You're milking the paycheck as an employee. That's what most employees do. As a business owner, you can't do that. If you do that, you're costing yourself a lot of money. There goes your trip to Aspen, Colorado this year. If if, if that's the lifestyle, I mean, if if you're slacking. So the business owner is always thinking about business. The mind is always racing. They're always problem solving. They're always working things out. Sure, sure. Employees, there's a place for them. 95, 99% of the, the world are employees. So yeah, I'm ripping on them a little bit, but I know you're not listening to this to become a freaking employee. You're listening to this because you want to be successful and rich. You're following me because you want to be something more than what you currently are. You want to change your DNA. You want to be somebody more, right? So sure, an employee has financial issues too. It's different though. It's different than a business owner. Financial issues to a business owner is like a com. It's like checking your email. Okay, like you, I mean, oh, I gotta check my email. Oh, I got a financial issue. I mean, it's the same. It's, it's like that common for a business owner. Can you deal with that? Is the question though. Can you handle? Can you handle financial pressures? Can you handle financial stress? Because if you cannot handle it. Owning a business, being an entrepreneur, succeeding and getting rich this way may not be for you. Because if you're going to be a business owner, you're probably going to run into some financial pressures. Not probably, you will. So for most employees, as soon as they have that first financial pressure catastrophe, it's bye bye They're out of there. Gone. They're going to run for the hills with their toes between their legs. Same for me. You get a job. Get back, get me back to that drip drip. The first sign of financial pressure and the newbie business owner is gone. He gone. Screw that. Get me back to the drip drip. It's two different worlds and they are light years apart. Business owner, 
an entrepreneur versus employee. Two different worlds. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because a lot of people want to leave the employee world and go into the business owner world. Fine. You could do that, but you need to understand what world you're traveling to. You're in your rocket ship leaving Mars to go to Jupiter where the rest of us business owners are at. And you got to realize you're going to get your butt kicked when you get over here. You're going to get your teeth kicked in. You're going to get your feelings hurt. You're going to get ripped on. You're going to get pulled apart. The naysayers are going to kick you in your ass. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to be timid and let them beat you? Or are you going to fight back and win the battle and triumph to success? That's what we're talking about. No one's going to tell you that because they don't want to scare you away from buying their products. I don't give a damn. I'm here to tell you the truth. And the truth is, most people can't succeed because they can't handle the stress. They can't handle the adversity. They can't handle the challenges. They can't handle the heat in the kitchen. So it's two different worlds. And because of this difference between the two, between the employee world and the business owner world, there's a difference. And that difference, we call that a barrier of entry. Barrier of entry. It's a barrier. Okay? That's why 95 to 99% of the people on planet Earth can't do it. They don't have what it takes to do it. And they haven't rearranged the molecules in their brain and their belief system to believe that they can do it. Which has taken me about 20-something years to do that for myself. So you got to change your, your the molecules and the neurological connections in your brain and your belief and your perceptions of what you think about yourself and you have to become more. If you want more, you have to become more. Does that strike? If, if you want if you want all this success, then you have to become more as an individual who can handle that. You got to step up to the plate. You you got you got to push yourself. You got to escape the comfort zone. You got to grab it and take it and make it yours. You got to be different than you've been your whole life. If you want the next five years to look better, then you got to take an action. You got to seize it. You have to rock and roll. You can't continue to do what you've done. If you continue to do what you've always done, you'll continue to get what you've always got. The the next five years are going to look like the last five years. If you keep doing the same thing you've been doing, if you keep being the same person you've been, you're going to keep getting the same stuff you've been getting. If you're used to making $50,000 a year and you want to make $500,000 a year, you're going to need to change you, brother. You're going to need to change you if you want more. It starts with you. So there's a huge barrier of entry. There's a huge barrier of entry. It's a wall. It's a Donald Trump wall, right? It's a 50 feet high wall. It's a prison wall, actually. It's a prison wall with razor blades at the top, you know, the razor wire in prisons. There's a 50-foot brick wall with razor blades at the top, razor wire at the top of the wall. There's snipers up there. They're going to shoot your ass. There's alligators if you slip and fall the wall. There's alligators that are going to eat you alive. There's a, the barrier is huge. The barrier of entry is huge. To go from being an employee stuck in that prison cubicle to being a free as a business owner. No working for the man anymore. You're working for your, yourself. You're the man. The woman. So that, that, that's why 99% fail. They can't climb that wall. They can't get over it. They can't go through the razor wire. They can't risk being shot by snipers. And they certainly don't want to get eaten by alligators. The barrier is too big. It's too scary. It's too it's too rough. Forget about it. Nah. Just give me the drip drip, baby. Drip, drip, drip. No alligators. Drip, drip, drip. That's one of the reasons. The wall is too high. The alligators are too scary. The snipers will take your ass out. Barrier of entry is too hard. Too hot. The heat in the kitchen is too hot. Employees can't hack it. Now. Now let's just say let's just say that the employee makes I don't know. Let's say let, let's say they're doing pretty good. Let's say an employee is making six figures in their employee world job, and you know cubicles, and they're making six figures in the cubicles, and you know, they're they're on the computer and they're actually not still working, and and they're, and let's say there's they're, they're husband wife significant others making money too. So as a family, they're doing quite well. They're making 150k to 200 200k 250k a year, and you know life's good, and you know then they get wild hair that they want to be successful and rich and all that. Live that free lifestyle. While they're currently making as a family $200,000 a year. 
forget about it, okay? Forget about it. Now it's even harder for you to succeed because their life is too comfy. Life is too easy. Life is pretty good at 200K per year, okay? You got the golf course. You got the two fancy cars. You got the two-story house in the suburbs. You got the you got the fancy vacation once in a while. You know, you go to Sandals in the Caribbean. I mean, life is pretty good. You go to Vegas once in a while. Everything is going pretty good at 200K. That's not too shabby. Way to go. A little pat on your back. Good job getting that degree. Everything's going good. And it, But the barrier of entry? There's no way. It's too hard. It's too hard to go from a pretty comfortable life to riches. It's a lot easier to go from rags to riches because you don't have anything to lose. So a lot of times people that are poor or hurt or wounded or fired or living in their mother's basement or whatever have a better chance of succeeding because they can, I mean, they're at rock bottom. All they can see is up. They're willing to take the risk. What do they have to lose? They don't have a golf membership to lose. They don't have two fancy cars to get repossessed. They, they, they don't have that. So going from rags to riches is a lot easier because they're looking up. People that are in comfy positions, comfy jobs, it's too scary to think about losing the golf membership, you know, not being able to shop at Lululemon or Nordstrom. <laughs> There's no urgency or it's just too scary, scary stress stress for them to push the employee to do things that are extraordinary. It's too difficult as an employee to do something extraordinary. And make no mistake about it, becoming a successful business owner is extraordinary. You got that? It's extra it's it's above average, it's unique, it's rare. Just look around. I mean most people cannot hack it. That's why the highways are loaded with people. If I have to drive to downtown Austin during rush hour, I'm like, what in the hell are these people doing? This sucks. I mean like I wanna I want to like move because there's too much traffic. Like, dude, we're like, wow, I can't believe people have to do this every single day. So most people fail. They can't hack it, right? They go back to the drip drip. Most need the drip drip paycheck. Drip drip. TikTok. Drip drip. So if you're successful as a business owner, then damn man, you're you're special. If if you if you're a business owner, a full time business owner, then you're special. Do you, I know you're going through a lot. I know it's tough. I know it's hard sometimes. I know you get down on yourself. I know you beat yourself up. I know you wonder if you have what it takes. I know you're worried about next month. I know you're worried about the kids. I know you're worried about survival. Instead of focusing on surviving, focus on thriving. It's a whole other podcast for another day. But if you're a successful business owner, which means you're a full-time business owner, the damn man, I mean, you're, 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 you're special. You're 1% type special. And you should give yourself a hand. I'll give you a hand. I'm on your side. I'm you. You're me. We're the same. And no damn golf clap either. I mean, this is like, come on. I mean, you, you need to give yourself some love and stop for a second and say, damn. Pat yourself on the back. I'll pat you on the back because you're special. Anyone can be an employee. Anyone can milk a damn paycheck. And sit in the damn cubicle and smile and do their job. Just doing enough to not get fired. Milking the heck out of that company while you drip, drip, keep dripping on into your direct deposited bank account where taxes are conveniently taken out before you have a chance to say, Woo, 43% in taxes? What the? It's easy to be an employee. I mean, easy. You don't get a job easily, right? You get a job and what, what do you do? You show up and whistle while you work. And you'll keep your job. Just do enough to not get fired and you'll keep your job. Smile while you work. Kiss the, ma the boss's ass, right? Whatever you need to do to keep the drip, drip going. It's easy. But as a business owner, you're different. You're, you're special. You're, you're, you're extraordinary. You fought. You won. You, you kicked ass. You, 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 you beat the demons. You, you, you made sure that you kept going when everyone else said you shouldn't. You, you picked yourself up, you dusted yourself off, you got back on the horse, and you charged again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. That's a business owner. Employee, trip, trip. That's a huge difference. Huge. So, some people, they just go out there and they, you know, chase business opportunities their entire freaking lives. 
even while they're an employee and they fail along the way. So what about them? Same thing. The barrier of entry is too big. Why? Well, there's re- there's like tons of reasons why people fail. You know, and a lot of people listening to this podcast right now have day jobs and they're getting a little pissed off. I told you I was going to hit you by two by four, but they get, you know, damn it, Eric, you're just pissing me off. But good. Someone needs to, but some people just, you know, they have their jobs and they want that business life. They want that freedom. They want that internet lifestyle. They want that success. They can taste it. It's right there. They're driven. They're ambitious to get it. Their entire lives are trying to get it. They're failing along the way. They get their ass kicked all the time. But why are they failing? Why do they keep failing? Why do some succeed and others fail, fail, fail for their entire lives? Well, there's many reasons. But one is they never fully go all the way in. They never fully go all the way in. They don't burn the, the boats behind them when they charge the island. So there's no retreat. They, 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 don't, they, they never fully go all in. They never do. They kind of half-ass everything. They kind of dabble. Dabble, dabble, dabble. Write that word down and circle it. Dabble. Are you dabbling after these business opportunities? You're going to get your ass kicked. Okay? You are not going to succeed. Let me tell you something. 10% is not good enough. So if you're a 90% in, all the way in, you're going to succeed. But if you're only 10% in, you're going to get your butt kicked. You're not going to succeed. It's never going to work that way. The, one of the major reasons why most people fail is they're never fully all the way in. They don't get a system or a business opportunity or a business deal or a plan or something and go all in with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their blood, sweat, and tears, with everything that they got to succeed. That never happens. It's the opposite. They find a business opportunity, find a deal, it looks pretty good, they give it a little bit of a college try, maybe a 10% effort, and then they quit. And then they move on to the next pie in the sky, the next attractive thing, the next magic button. And then they do it again. They give it a 10% half ass try. And then they wonder and they look around and they say, you make me successful, you make me successful, You do this for me. You make me successful. Come over here and make me successful. If I give you some money, you make me successful. And that will never, ever, 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 ever work. You make you successful. You have to put the responsibility on your own shoulders to become successful. It's never the other way. Most people never go all the way in. It's never a must. Employees never get to the point where it's an absolute must. It's never to the point where it's do or die. It's never make it work or your kid starve. Okay? It's never make it work, generate the cash flow to pay the heat, or the heat gets disconnected and your car gets repossessed. It's never on the line like that for people. Never. Nah. They got the drip drip and the country club golf membership and the four weeks of vacation a year now. 401k medical profit sharing. There's no make it work or starve for them. It's more like show up and whistle while you work and keep your job as compared to I got to make it work this week to put food on the table and not have my car repossessed. That's the difference. That's the difference between the people that succeed and the people that fail. The people that have jobs and are trying to quit those jobs are giving it a half-ass effort. They're barely trying. You cannot debate this with me. You cannot tell me you've been all in. You cannot tell me you your whole heart, blood, sweat, and tears have been laser beam focused on the one system, the one thing that you're going to do to generate money. No. Never. I never see that. I've been doing this for years, over a decade. I never see one person all in, baby. All in. Blood, sweat, tears, soul, everything. Every fiber of their being into succeeding. Never. And... Are you that person? Are you that person who strives to succeed and get rich and you're not there yet? Well, look, if that's you, then you should be getting a lot out of this because this is what it takes to succeed. You've got to stop being a freaking employee for one. As an employee, when I was an employee, I never saw any business deals. I never saw any opportunities to make millions because I wasn't looking for them. I wasn't looking for them seriously. 
They did not even exist. They, they never showed up because I wasn't looking for them. It's like, you know, I bought this new Mercedes. And before, I never saw that Mercedes anywhere on the highways or the streets or anywhere. But I bought this new Mercedes. Now I keep seeing other people that have my same car. And I'm like, dang it. I thought this was a, more of a rare car, but look, it's everywhere. I live in an affluent area, but still, it's like, dang, everyone else has a car too. I thought I was, I thought I was you know, getting a more rare car. It's because now I see it because I have one. Where before I didn't have that car, I didn't ever even see those cars. When you're an employee, you don't see opportunity. You see drip, drip. When you're a business owner, you see opportunity every day. You have to say no to opportunity because you cannot physically handle all the opportunities that come your way. So, I mean, just go to like go just go down the street to a hotel and walk in and ask the clerk in the front, "Hey, would you like to, you know, do a business deal where you can make over six figures per year?" And they'll laugh at you. They'll laugh in your face and they'll be like, uh, "Do you need a wake up call in the morning?" They're basically ignoring your ass because they think you're full of it. They're on the drip drip. Paycheck. There's a stark difference, and it's night and day. When I look at employees, I say, forgive them for they do not know. Forgive them for they do not know. Employees do not know. They're just on the drip drip. They can't see. They're like in the Matrix. See that movie? They're like in the Matrix. They can't. They don't know the truth. So you want to get rich and successful, huh? You want to live a life, a free life? You want to live that abundant, free internet life? Rich, wealthy, successful? Then you've got to become an entrepreneur. You've got to become a risk taker, a risk taker, a mover, a shaker, an action taker. You have to take action, like huge leaps of faith, serious action, all in action, relentless action. There's no other way. You have to be able to do something, a vision or journey that you have, even when you don't have the, all the answers. You've got to take that leap of faith when you don't have all the steps yet. You have to take the leap of faith when you're not really 100% sure what's going to even happen, what the outcome's going to be, even when you can fail badly and everyone's going to laugh at you and you're going to stress out to the point where the stress makes you sick to your stomach. You've got to take the leap of faith before you know it will even work or not or it will never freaking work, man. You've got to take the leap of faith before you know it will even work or not or it will never work. Got it? You've got to take that leap of faith Without knowing it's going to work yet. That's the only way to do it. You have to have faith. And most people don't have faith. They're too scared to death. They can't do it. You've got to have the faith. You've got to take a leap of faith or nothing works for you. Nothing happens for you. Nothing's going to work if you keep doing the same old, same old, same old you've always done. You've got to take a risk and have faith that it'll be okay. You've got to have faith that you will figure it out along the way. I, I, mean, I remember hearing... You can drive from, you know, the east side of the United States to the west side of the United States at nighttime, only being able to see 100 feet in front of you with your headlights. There could be a dinosaur out there on the highway, but, you, you know, until you get up to it, you can't see. You, you, you can only see 50 feet in front of you or so. But you have faith that you'll just keep going, and, and as you keep going, you can see further, and you, can, and you just go 50 feet at a time. You can drive all the way across the country like that. Well, that's how it is in business. You can only see 50 feet in front of you. You don't have all the answers. You don't know what's out there in the darkness. You don't know what tra tragedies and crisis is coming. You don't know what obstacles and barriers and challenges are going to kick your ass. You just keep going, only being able to see 50 feet in front of you. That's how you do it in business. If you own a business and you've been stuck at the same level for way too long, and you want to raise your game and get to the next level, the same thing applies to you. You can't keep doing the same thing you've been doing and expect different results. And you're going to have to take a leap of faith. And you can only see 50 feet in front of you. That's just the way it is, no matter what. And that kicks everyone's ass, and that's why they don't take action. That's the main reason why people aren't rich. They don't, they don't get after it like that. They're on the drip drip. They're on the brain-numb zombie lifestyle. They're not on the abundant, kick-ass journey of, you know, ambitious, mover-shaker, leaps of faith lifestyle. They're not on that plan. They're on Obamacare plan. <laughs> They're on a different plan, right? People say all the time, once I make, you know, like, once I, Eric, once I make, you know, ten to $15,000 per month for at least uh, six to seven months in a row, then I'll quit my job. I've heard that so many times from so many different people. It just makes me grin. 
Eric, as soon as I make $15,000 per month for at least six months in a row, then I'll quit my corporate job. Until then, it's too risky. Then you are in the wrong business, okay? <laughs> Good luck, right? It's like, yeah. So that's not the mindset that's going to do it. That's not the mindset that's going to make the difference. That's not the go kick ass mindset. But, 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 Eric, I got this cush job over there. And my kids go to private school, and I live in a gated community in the suburbs, and I got medical bills to pay off, and we're in debt because of our college loans, and we have goldfish to feed, and we're saving for a new roof for our house, and the fence needs repaired, and you know before the HOA finds us, and 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 trip trip. That's not going to get you there. That's not going. I mean, those things are always going to be there, whether you own a business or not, right? There's always HOA fines. There's always going to be stuff to pay and fears and stuff like that. The question is, how bad do you really want to make this business success, wealthy lifestyle work for you? Do you want it badly or are you just kind of half-assing it? Let's get real. Let's put it on the table. Because if you have a wimpy sort of kind of, you know, wimpy, like nonchalant kind of attitude, you know, kind of half-assed attitude about becoming successful or rich, you're going to get your ass kicked. If you have a nonchalant attitude about becoming successful or rich as an entrepreneur, you will get your ass kicked. The sniper on that big barrier of entry wall is going to take your ass out. And the alligator is going to eat you alive. So here's what you need. You need unshakable faith. Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. A leap of faith, unshakable faith. I am going to make this work. With your eyebrows down and a bead of sweat coming down your forehead. Unshakable faith. With your fist clutched, white knuckle pointing your finger at anyone that says this is impossible or that you can't do it. Screw that. Unshakable, relentless, baby. You need to be relentless. Unshakable faith and relentless that nobody and no thing and no personal problem and no tragedy and no obstacle and no addiction and no nothing is going to get in your damn way of getting what it is that you want. That is relentless. That is aggressiveness. That is unshakable faith. And that is what makes a successful entrepreneur and there's nothing else. Sure, we'll beat around the bush with the employee world out there because Talking like I'm talking right now pisses them off and makes them run for the hills, and they're going to quit stop on this podcast. They, they all did. Okay? Wrong podcast, wrong room. <laughs> they moved on to, like, something else. Tim Ferriss or something. But this, this is what you need. You need freaking aggressiveness. You need unshakable faith. Sure, you, you, you'll see business owners are sweet and nice, you know, and all on the surface, but behind the scenes, they are relentless relentless get to know them watch and see for yourself back behind the scenes they're kicking ass and taking names they're movers and shakers and making things happen they even raise their voice so you got to be relentless do whatever you can do ask favors swallow your pride push people push the issue you got to have a never give up attitude uh, you need to have a go and get it attitude, like a make it happen attitude. You got to be obsessed. You got to be relentless, shrewd, even aggressive. You got to be tough. And you got to go and freaking get it. Take it. Take it. Don't ask for it. Take it. Even when you're asking, you're taking. The wimpy attitude is going to crush you. The strong survive. Go take it. Don't wait for Superman to fly out of the sky and save your ass because he won't. There is no Superman. Don't look for someone else to take care of you or give to you. Don't be a taker. Put the responsibility on your own shoulders and go get it. Take it. Look around you right now. What do you see in your life? If you're driving, that's your car. If you're at your house, that's your house. If you're at your job, that's your job. Everything you see around you, everything in your life right now, is your fault. It's not mommy's fault. It's not your daddy's fault. It's not where you went to school. It's not if you got picked on as a kid. It's not if you got picked last on soccer. 
None of that matters. It doesn't matter if you dropped out of school. None of that matters. It doesn't matter if you grew up with money or not. It doesn't matter if you have addictions or not. It doesn't matter if you have personal problems or not. It's all up to you and God. Okay? It's not up to me. It's not up to Superman. It's not up to some guru schmuru. It's up to you. It's up to God. You have to go get it. You have to be aggressive. Seek and you shall find. Go take it. Go get it. I heard this story once about these tribe people. They they lived with like jaguars and tigers and stuff. Like the tribe of people like would walk around with like, you know, cats, like jaguars. You know, like nothing. Like the jaguars is there. The cats, the jaguars, they never ate them. They never ate the tribe's people. The, the, the tribe people just like were there, like just hanging out with them. Like all cool, right? So the tribes were like all cool hanging out with jaguars. Like, hey jaguar, how's it going, dude? You want to eat that last slice, bro? I mean, it's just like hanging out. And you know why they never ate the tribes, dude? You know why the jaguars like never like, oh, I think I'll eat this guy. Because they, because they found, they, they like, you know, this, they did an experiment. They studied these tribe people and they were wondering, like, why, why don't the jaguars eat them? <laughs> like, what's going on here? They found out because the, the tribe people and tribesmen acted like predators themselves. They walked around, they breathed, they moved, they had that look in their eye. They walked around and acted like predators themselves, just like the jaguars. And the jaguars left them alone. But once in a while, the cats would eat one of the tribe's guys. Like all of a sudden, one of the tribe's guys would get taken out. And it was usually late at night. And they found that when, they, when, it, when, the, when one of the tribes would get eaten and killed, pounced on by a jaguar, they found that it was always because the tribe's dude was drunk. So he was no longer a predator. He was a wimp, all drunk and giggling, right? On the jungle pathway home. He gone. It's just, it's just giggling, right? He's like, I'm a drunk man. <laughs> and then he gets killed. So he wasn't, his guard was down. He was no longer a predator anymore. He was a freaking wimp because he got drunk. And he was walking home with jaguars that saw that he was drunk. And they're like, I'm going to take his ass out. That, that, that's what happened. In business, if you're a drunk tribesman giggling as you slumber back to your jungle hut, you're toast. However, if you're a predator in business, like a jaguar, like these tribesmen that were predators like that, and you're aggressive, and you're walking around on a mission with your fangs and foam coming out your mouth, and your heart pumping out your chest, and you're crunched down, ready to attack and take it, then you'll get what you want, damn it. You will get what you want with that kind of attitude, with that kind of predator aggressiveness. Now, you can turn that up yourself. You can turn up the volume and be more aggressive. Drink some coffee like I did earlier. Just get a little bit more aggressive. Pump yourself up. Go freaking take it, right? That's how it, that's what's required in business. One time, one of my friends, years ago, we did a seminar. And when he was going to speak, he passed out energy drinks to everyone in the, in the audience, right? And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing, man? Pass out energy drinks. You get everybody all weird. He's like, no, I'm going to I'm gonna tell them what the secret to my success this year has been. I'm like, okay, man. Don't screw things up. So he gets up there and he's like, once I, I gave you guys all energy drinks because I wanted to tell you that that was the secret to my success this year. Because before I was real kind of wimpy. And then I would just drink energy drinks and then I would reach out and ask affiliates to promote for me. And then I didn't care if they rejected me. I didn't care if I pissed them off because I was all pumped up. And it started working. And I was like, whoa. And my girlfriend was telling me to get off of energy drinks because I was being too aggressive and get mad and angry. But we're making so much more money. I just kept drinking energy drinks all the time. And I'm like, whoa, man. You need to get your heart checked out. But still, it was a really impressive moment to me because it makes sense. Because I didn't do it with energy drinks usually. What I would do it with is just getting myself in a state of mind. So I would I have these little routines I'd go through where, like, and this started 10 years ago where I would listen to, you know, just a little bit of, like, Jim Rohn or Anthony Robbins or Zig Ziller, Zig Ziglar or Les Brown or, just, you know, any one of those guys because I had a library of all their stuff, right? So they, and I would listen to a little bit of them, and I'd get pumped up. And then I would recruit affiliates. So then I would pay for traffic. because then I would promote to my list. or then I would you know, ask someone to partner with me on a product or, you know, whatever it takes in business, right? Ask someone to write copy or ask someone to do the technical or, you know, make stuff happen. So being 10% more aggressive than you usually are 
to get you 100, 200, 300% more results. So the energy drink analogy story is a good story. It's true. You can do it with just mindset. You can get in a state of mind by just using some contagiousness, some, some motivation, but be vigilant with that. Be on a schedule. I would do it every time I logged onto the computer. When I sat down to work, before I checked my email, before I you know went and did anything with my business or checked in with any of my team members, I would spend 10, 20, 30 minutes just watching some motivating video or some listening to some motivating audio and get in the zone. And then, then I would log onto the computer, log into the internet, log into my list, my Aweber account or whatever and start promoting. So you can, you can be different like that. You, you can put yourself in that, in that aggressiveness state and you can walk around on a mission and you're going to get what you want. If you want to be successful, you got to keep in mind it's not going to come from being timid and slow and off guard and nonchalant. You've got to go take it. And when you get your teeth kicked in, which you're going to get your, your teeth kicked in, you're going to get your freaking teeth kicked in in business. What will you do then? Will you suck it up, get humbled? Because you're going to get humbled. The, the world has a way of humbling you in business. You're going to get your butt kicked and you're going to dust yourself off you're going to pick the pieces up, right? You're going to push forward, never quitting, just readjusting, recalculating like a GPS system in your car. You take the wrong road and it recalculates and it's like, oh, now take a left, dumbass. You take a left and you mess up again. They're like, you should have exited back there, dumbass. Well, well that's okay. We'll take a U-turn up here. So that, that's what's happening in the business too. You, you have to pick up the pieces. You got to dust yourself off to get back, get back up on the horse and, and, and recalculate, readjust recalibrate and you're going to if not you know you're going to end up running for the hills quitting with your tail between your legs getting ass kicked because something bad happened like like when paypal freezes all of your money you cannot pay your people or like when your traffic source stops working all of a sudden or what's another one like your list isn't converting like it used to or when your partner rips you off without any remorse or apologizing at all. Or when a new government regulation comes out and stomps your business into the mud. Or when a personal tragedy, like a really serious personal tragedy happens in your life. Like a tragedy that derails your strength and derails your emotions and just sends you into the depths of despair because your mom died like mine did and then years later you go through it all over again when your dad dies. Do you, do you, do you, do you just like cave in and go rock bottom or do you pick yourself up, dust yourself off and be relentless, baby? You don't let it win. You win. Because you're going to get your freaking teeth kicked in. It's inevitable. But what are you prepared to do about it? Will you be the jaguar? Or are you going to be the drunk tribesman that gets eaten? Are you going to be the jaguar that's aggressive and picks yourself up and attacks and succeeds? Or the drunk tribesman that gets eaten? Or you're up there on the wall and the sniper takes you out and the alligators eat you because the barrier of entry is too tough. Will you triumph and push through adversity? Or will you cave in and cry uncle? What about, what about all the trolls and naysayers out there who throw daggers at you and make fun of you? What about the family members who make rude, passive-aggressive comments about your success or lack thereof? What about like when tragedy, or no? What about when panic sets in, and you're going to get panicky? Panic is going to set in. It will. What do you do when you're panicky? Who do you go to? Do you go to Uncle Bobby down the road, Aunt Sally, or do you go to someone else who lives it, drinks it, breathes it, and sleeps business just like you? Who, who has been through that panic mode many times and has made it through to see the next day. Because you're going to get in the panic mode in your business. You need go-to people, relationships. Another important part about being successful. Go-to people. Your brothers and sisters in this business, entrepreneurs just like you, is who you want to talk to, is who you want to be around. You don't want to be around Aunt Sally who works as an accountant down the street. He doesn't have the right advice. And neither does Uncle Ricky Bobby, who like drives a forklift. The people who will give you the right advice are people like me. People out there who are entrepreneurs who've been in this business, 
who have had panic mode, who have had personal tragedies, who have had their teeth kicked in, who have had to pick themselves up and, and do it all over again, get back on the horse, people that have to raise their own aggressiveness and succeed, people that have been ripped off by partners, you got to be around those people because those are the people that are going to help you the most. They're the ones that are going to say, it's going to be okay. Keep the faith. Look, this isn't for most people. If anything, I might be letting a lot of people know that, hey, you know what? Eric's right. I just need to stay on the drip drip. <laughs> this was way too hard. Or it's motivating you and you're like, I can do this. I can be that guy. I can turn up my aggressiveness 10%. I can go take it. I can put my whole heart, blood, sweat, tears, soul into the succeeding. I can go all in. I could be relentless, baby. Is that you? Are you going to run for the hills? It's a choice. It's a fork in the road. What are you going to do? 99% take the left fork in the road and go to the drip tip. 1%, 3%, something like that. They take the road on the right, the road less traveled, and they go and they take it. But man, for those of you who make it, to make me take that fork in the road to the right, and you pick yourself up, and you go into the darkness, only being able to see 50 feet in front of you with a flashlight, and you're going through this, the, the scariness where the jaguar is walking around with you, but you're aggressive because you have the predator, even though you're scared and your heart's beating out of your chest, you do it anyway. You take that leap of faith. Let me tell you something. When you make it, there's no better job. There's no better job. There's no better career. There's no better gig. There's no better journey. There's no better personal growth for you either because you're going to grow like crazy while you overcome this adversity, while you overcome the tragedy, while you keep trucking along, when you defeat the naysayers and defeat the internal enemies and keep blasting forward. You're going to grow like crazy. Your personal growth is going to skyrocket. The agony of defeat, the thrill of triumph. You're going to have defeat. You're going to have wins. You're going to have losses, peaks and valleys. You're going to have sleepless nights. You're going to have stress. You're going to have financial pressures, and it's beautiful. You get to watch your baby blossom into success. Your business is your baby. You, you gave birth to it, and now it's successful, and you're proud of that. That's priceless. That, this, that It's awesome. If you have that burning flame inside your gut, then it's just the best feeling in the world to see something succeed that you created out of nothing. When you change other people's lives, that's priceless, man. There's no better feeling. What better career could you have when you're changing lives firsthand because of what you're creating, because of what you're doing, because of what you innovated, well, because of you and what you, how you grew individually as a person. And, and when you're giving back big time, I give, I'm starting to give more now that I ever made per month, like giving like charity. It's amazing. I need to give more because I believe God's going to keep giving me more as I keep giving. And it's great. And that's priceless. I'm learning that. I'm still growing even though I've done millions. Keep growing. Keep keep tearing down barriers. Keep blowing through ceilings. I believe I've changed my DNA because I did not grow up successful. I, I came up from the wrong side of the track. Everything was stacked against me. The odds were against me. I was supposed to be an average person if I was lucky, okay? There was a lot of bad stuff. And I changed my personal DNA. I made myself different. I made myself a different person. I became more. I became more because I would go to Anthony Robbins, and I would go to Zig Ziglar, and I would go to Les Brown, and those guys were my teams. They were my, they were my mentors, even though I didn't know them. I, they were my they were my guide. They, they were my go-to. When I would get stressed, I'd play some Brian Tracy. When I would get up in the middle of the night at 4 a.m. because I couldn't sleep and I was sick and my stomach was stressed, I'd play me some Anthony Robbins. I would listen to Sermon. I would listen to Rick Warren, people like that, Stephen Furtick. I would listen to these people in the middle of the night because I had to get over this problem and keep on trucking and keep on going and keep on rolling. That's what helped change my DNA. It helped change the molecules in my brain, the neurological connections in my brain. It helped me see things differently. It helped change my beliefs, change my beliefs about me. And sure, I got the naysayers, the friends, the family, the coworkers, people I would get around, the marketplace, 
people would constantly rip on me. And I just kept trucking. I kept going. And I just picked myself up, dust myself off, and keep kicking ass. Is that what you're going to do? Because if you do, you're going to grow yourself and you're going to change your own DNA. I believe my kids' DNA, my son and my, and my daughter's DNA is different now. They were born both after I started succeeding. And I bet you they have the DNA, the new DNA. Not the old Eric. Not the Eric I was supposed to be. I changed that. You can change you. Okay? I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're young. I don't care if you're old. I don't care if you're fat, skinny, in shape, ugly, <laughs> sick. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you're from some crazy foreign country where you don't even have the internet. I don't care if you're so broke that you have to use the library internet. I don't care if you're sleeping in your mom's basement right now. I don't care if you don't even have a house or a car or, or, or a dollar to your name. You can change your DNA. You can change who you are. You can become more if you want it and if you will be relentless and if you will go take it. Giving your kids more, that's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, my kids don't even fathom not having like I did. I wore like the same shirt to school like two weeks in a row because I had three shirts to my name as a kid. I wore my mom's pants to school because we couldn't afford to buy knee pants. And they were bell bottoms. <laughs> I remember there was one little girl to go ding dong, ding dong, because every time I walked by, I wore the same bell bottom pants. I was poor. But to be able now to be able to give my kids whatever they want, my son has been to Aspen and, and, and Cayman Islands more than most adults will ever go to in their entire lives. He's had more shoes than I've had in my entire life. Okay? Giving your kids more is absolutely priceless and it just makes me proud. Living abundantly with luxuries, priceless. It just All of this is just is hard to, to even explain in words now. But ultimately, here's what it is in a nutshell. Becoming more is priceless. For you to become more as an individual is priceless. If you want more, you've got to become more. Write that down. Write it down. Memorize it. Say it to yourself over and over again all the time. If you want more, you've got to become more. You. If you want more, you've got to become more. If you want more, you've got to become more. If you want more, you've got to become more. If you want to get rich, realize there are plenty of morons walking around out there who've become successful and rich. So it doesn't take brains. It doesn't take charisma. It doesn't take good looks. It doesn't take speaking ability. It doesn't take skills and talents and being a genius at anything. You know what it takes to get successful to be rich? Courage. Courage. Do you have bravery? Do you have courage to go in the darkness? Do you have courage to take a leap of faith? It's courage, baby. It's faith. It's discipline. It's being obsessed. It's being militant. It's being aggressive like the Jaguar. It's going out there and it's taking it. Just sell, babies.